I'm going to start off just give you a quick uh, overview of Aquila Resources. Um, we are a TSX listed company focused on the Great Lakes uh, region, specifically the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Our flagship project is called the Back 40. It's a proposed polymetallic VMS deposit. 80% uh, of the payable metal of Back 40 will come from gold and zinc, and uh, it's evenly split exactly between the two. We have a strong shareholder base. 50% of our shares are owned by three organizations, HUD Bay at 15%, Ruffer LLP at 15%, and Orion Resource Partners uh, currently owns 19% of the company. Uh, we're working currently on several near-term catalysts. Number one is permitting. We want to have our mine permits finalized by the end of this year. And I'll talk a little bit more about the process uh, for that permitting uh, in a little bit. Uh, we do have drill results we're expecting uh, to release at the end of this month. Uh, we did have an exploration program. Uh, July, August of this year, so those results will be coming out at the end of September. And uh, feasibility study on the open pit portion uh, of the project will be ready at the end of the year. All of these activities permitting feasibility have been funded over the past 18 months uh, through a financing transaction we did with Orion back in March 2015. It was a 17 and a quarter million dollar uh, silver stream. Silver is about 5% of our payable metal. We viewed it as non-core. A uh, good opportunity for us to stream. Uh, so again, 17 and a quarter million was brought in by that silver stream, three and a half million dollars in an additional private placement for almost 21 million dollars in total capital raised. Uh, so we are focused on the Great Lakes region, specifically the Upper Peninsula. If you're not familiar with the Upper Peninsula, it's a section of Michigan just west of Lake Michigan underneath Lake Superior. Uh, it is a uh, area that has a a long legacy of mining. There's been copper mining going back to the 1850s. Recently there's been iron ore mining. There's been gold mining there. Uh, we believe Michigan to be a very favorable jurisdiction. Uh, Michigan passed uh, new mining legislation back in 2007. They've awarded three permits uh, since they uh, uh, closed that uh, new mining legislation back in 2007. One of those permits was for the Eagle Mine, which is now owned by Lundeen, went into production uh, at the end of 2014. The Back 40 is located just uh, on the northeast portion of what's known as the Pinocchian VMS belt. And uh, if I can figure out how to work this thing, I'll point it out. Oh, there you go. Um, uh, so right here. The, this uh, sort of yellow blob is the uh, Pinocchio and VMS belt. Uh, we also own Bend and Reef. These are two other projects, early uh, stage exploration projects that we also own on that belt, uh, highly prospective projects. Uh, all we're doing there is maintaining the properties currently. We're not spending any money on developing uh, those assets. Uh, all of our money currently is going towards back 40. Um, uh, Having said that, the, the one primary difference between Bend and Reef and Back 40 is Back 40 entirely resides in the state of Michigan. Bend and Reef both reside in Wisconsin. Uh, we are also reassembling a land package just about 20 miles north of Back 40. It was a project that we owned about three years ago, four years ago. We had to let it go because of financial constraints. Uh, we're, we're putting that land package in a new company we launched called Aquila Nickel. And uh, again, a highly prospective uh, property. Uh, we're doing some early stage exploration work right now. Again, keeping the expenditure low as most of our expenses are going towards back 40. But again, this is a project that we had, um, uh, we were very excited about uh, three or four years ago. We just had to let it go because of funding. So uh, we will be repatriating that over the coming months. Okay. Uh, so just a little bit about the project. Again, 100% uh, owned gold and zinc rich uh, deposit. Uh, we reacquired it from Hud Bay in 2014. It was previously a joint venture with Hud Bay. Hud Bay owned 51% of the project. Aquila owned 49%. Hud Bay was the operator. They decided to suspend funding back in 2012. They continued to maintain uh, the property for a year and a half. Uh, it, it was. Uh, dormant, but they continued to maintain it. We reacquired it in January 2014. Uh, we submitted permit applications for Back 40 uh, last November 2015. 
Uh, it's been under technical review by the Michigan State Regulator, the Department of Environmental Quality, which oversees the permitting process in Michigan. And uh, recently, about two weeks ago, uh, we received news that they issued proposed decisions on three of our permits, uh, surface water discharge permit, an air permit, and the main mine permit application, which includes the EIA. Proposed decision means they issue draft permits with conditions. Uh, they open uh, those permits up to public comment. There's now a 64-day uh, consolidated public comment period, which will end on November 3rd. After November 3rd, they'll incorporate, if necessary, any comments that come from the public. They may ask us questions, and then they'll, they'll issue final permits. Uh, again, feasibility study is expected uh, at the end of this year on the open pit portion of this project, and we believe we're going to be the next uh, low-cost producer in the upper Midwest. Uh, this is the last economic study we did. This was published in uh, September of 2014 after we reacquired the project from Hud Bay. Uh, you can see strong economics, IRR north of 30 percent, and the payback period is quite short. One of the reasons why the payback period is so short is the pit has two very high-grade gold zones that are near surface. Uh, two Gossens. In fact, one of those uh, Gossens breaches the surface. There's an outcrop uh, on site, believe it or not. And so the payback is quite quick. This, uh, uh, the pre-production capex estimate was $261 million. Uh, because we generate so much cash flow in those early years because of those gold zones, we actually produce in year one 145,000 ounces of gold. Uh, we think it will carry debt very well because you'll be able to pay, debt, pay down that debt very quickly. Uh, the PEA didn't uh, include the underground portion of the mine, so it was a 12.5 million ton uh, open pit and then a 3.6 million ton uh, underground operation. A 16-year mine life exactly split eight years in the pit, eight years in the underground. Uh, this is just our current recovery rates. Uh, four products we're producing a gold silver dore uh, that comes through a leach circuit, so the oxides uh, run through a leach plant. Uh, and then there's three concentrates we'll be producing a zinc con, a copper con, and a lead con. These are our most uh, recent recoveries. We actually completed a metallurgical test work program in the fall. We announced the results of that earlier this year. It was done by SGA, SGS Lake, Lakefield with the oversight of Lycopodium, who's our lead consultant on the feasibility study. We did improve the recoveries of four of our metals. Uh, none of these recoveries are reflected in those economics that I just uh, showed you. Um, this is just the production profile for BAC40. Uh, the throughput when we're in the open pit years is 5,350 tons per day. It's 4,500 tons of sulfides and 850 tons of oxides. You can see in the pie, pie chart on the, on the right, uh, payable metal split. Again, 80% coming from that gold and zinc. It's even 40-40. And then the revenue by product um, sort of evens out a little bit because a lot of the gold does report to the copper con. This is just a sensitivity analysis. We took our uh, base case commodity pricing that we used in the PEA. We used 1293 gold. Uh, at the time, again, this was September 2014, and zinc of 96 cents. And uh, we took those prices down by 15 percent. We increased them by 15 percent. Uh, you can see even uh, at minus 15 percent, uh, project holds together quite well, still has IRR above 20 percent. This is the global resource. This was based on a resource update that was done in early 2013. The PEA was based on this new resource update. Um, no new drilling that we've done is included in this resource update. Uh, it's 17.5 million ton uh, total deposit. Uh, it's grading about a uh, little bit better than 2 grams per ton of gold, 3% uh, zinc. If you include the inferred, we have 1.1 million ounces of gold, 1.1 billion pounds of zinc. It's important to recognize that 90 percent of the total resources in the measured and indicated category, 98 percent of the resource in the pit is measured and indicated. So this, it's been very well drilled, this ore body, um, over 120,000 meters, over 500 drill holes. So the, the development strategy bet for BAC40, uh, currently we're permitting only the open pit portion of the mine, uh, and we're completing a feasibility study 
only on the open pit portion of the mine. Uh, the strategy is once we're permitted, we're developing the project, uh, we'll look to continue to drill and better define the underground resource. Uh, the uh, ore body is open at depth. Uh, we think we have some holes, for example, at 740 meters. They're still in mineralization, so we think there's a lot of resource upside in the underground. Uh, we'll continue to drill that and uh, develop an underground strategy. At that time, we'll have to go uh, and we'll have to permit that underground uh, operation separately. Um, and then we'll continue to drill satellite targets. Um, as the speaker just before me said, uh, VMS deposits, they tend to occur in clusters. We have a lot of targets around the immediate area. We're prioritizing those targets and we'll continue to test those satellites uh, as we move forward. Uh, so again, the permitting update, I, I just want to give you a little bit of overview of how it's done in Michigan. So there's four permits that are required to build and operate the Back 40 mine. Uh, there's the mine permit application under the new mining statute in Michigan, Part 632. That mine permit includes uh, the EIA, as I spoke of. There's also a pollutant discharge and elimination systems permit or a surface water discharge permit. Uh, there's a wetlands protection permit that's required and there's an air permit required. As I mentioned, we have been granted uh, draft permits for the mining permit, uh, the surface water discharge, and the air. Uh, the wetlands protection permit, uh, we received comments back from the state regulator on August 26th. Uh, we actually met them Tuesday of this week. Uh, we're just formulating our responses to those questions. Uh, we think, uh, again, we'll be in a position to have that permit. It follows a bit of a a different administrative process from the other three permits. But what's important to recognize here is Michigan has delegated authority to issue their own wetlands permit. It's called a 303 permit. Uh, they don't need to go through the exercise of working with the EPA or the Army Corps of Engineers uh, to get this permit or to issue this permit. Uh, they do kick it up uh, to the EPA for review and comment. Uh, the comments that came back to us on August 26th included all the comments uh, from the EPA. Um, again, consolidated public comment period has started. Uh, the regulator will be holding a public hearing near our mine site on October 6th, and the public comment period will end November 3rd. We expect to, issue, or to receive uh, final permits shortly thereafter. A uh, bit of a milestone calendar here on the permitting side and feasibility. We want to conclude both of those by the end of this year. Uh, we then want to make a, a uh, approval decision on the project and look to be in project financing, hopefully the middle part uh, of next year. And then we'll start detailed engineering construction uh, with a target to be in commercial production by the end of 2019. Uh, future opportunities, again, Regional exploration at Back 40. It's a VMS deposit. We think there's a lot of upside here, uh, and we will continue to drill uh, the current deposit step out drilling as well as uh, further defining uh, the underground. We will look at new projects in the UP. Again, Aquila Nickel is a recent project that we're assembling right now. Um, we think it's a favorable mining jurisdiction. If we can show that we can get a project permitted. In Michigan, we think it's important that we have a next generation project. And uh, ultimately, we'll look at advancing the development of our other projects, Bend and Reef. Um, but right now, uh, those projects are just being uh, maintained. Okay, they're on effectively care and maintenance. Uh, management team, again, my background, capital markets, uh, finance. I started off uh, in the investment business with RBC and BMO. I, I then uh, started a company called the Equicom Group. I grew and sold to the Toronto Stock Exchange in 2007. Uh, I've been advising public companies and boards uh, my entire career. Uh, we have a strong technical team behind me. Andrew Bushi is our VP Project Development. 25 plus year engineer in the field, has developed projects all over the world, South Africa, Northern Quebec, et cetera. Uh, Cliff Nelson, our VP U.S. Operations, we brought in uh, this February. Uh, Cliff was actually educated at Michigan Tech. He's a metallurgical engineer. He runs our operations uh, locally. He's got 35 plus years operating experience in mining, all within the U.S., Alaska, Arizona, 
uh, in Nevada. And Tom Quigley is the founding geologist, uh, so he's been on this project from the early days back in 2002, 2003, and was the CEO up until about three years ago. Okay. Uh, and finally, the capital structure, again, uh, I think we have a pretty sh uh, impressive shareholder register uh, for such a small company. Uh, market caps in the 65 to 70 million dollar range, depending on where the share price is trading. 234 million shares outstanding. 60% is tightly held. Again, those three institutions at the bottom own 50%. You include insiders uh, and one other institution, uh, you get to 60% uh, tightly held. And uh, that's it. Happy to take any questions anybody has. Yes. The two other properties, what are the, well, I know. the two other properties, what are the surface expressions of those? There, one's a, a, a gold project, one's a gold copper project. Um, they're VMS. Uh, we have some early uh, drill holes on those projects. Um, but that's, that's really it. So we have some historical uh, drill holes that were done by INCO a number of years ago. Uh, we did our own drill program there back in 2011-2012. What's that? No, no, these would be underground uh, opportunities. What's that, sorry? Well, you're, you're, you're not talking to a geologist, so I don't, I don't want to talk to the, about the rocks, but, uh, you know, again, we've, we've got some good intercepts there. We're not actually spending any money there currently, we're just maintaining those properties as we speak. We have time for another question if anybody in the audience. Anyone else? Um, I might have one. Okay. Um, talking about the public comment period. Yes. What is the, uh, I'm just wondering, the state of Michigan, what, are there any, in terms of social acceptability, are there any groups out there that uh, are refractory to your project? I'm just trying to see what uh, what could come up on the pipeline in terms of being against this project and why? I mean, it's an open pit, but I would think that... Uh, yeah. Well, I think when you're permitting a project in any jurisdiction, there's going to be opposition groups. There is opposition groups there. Uh, they tend to be small. Um, uh, they were the same groups that opposed Eagle as well. They're not particularly well-funded. There is no national, you know, uh, group that's, uh, you know, challenging the permit at this point. And there's a lot of supporters there as well. You, you know, keep in mind this is an area that's pretty economically depressed. Uh, there's a lot of mining history there. Empire Mine uh, near Marquette just closed, so there's 600 miners that are going to be looking for work. Uh, so we think it's an opportunity to, you know, get a good labor pool up there. Um, but, uh, you know, there is, there is some uh, small opposition there as well. And I imagine you did your homework well, so it's something that uh, should be any bad surprises, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're excited uh, about where we stand and, and the permitting process in Michigan. Thank you very much. Thank you.